Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 27th of April. Indian Prime Minister Modi chairs COVID-19 review meeting, says vaccination coverage for children a priority. Three Chinese teachers killed in Pakistan bombings. Baloch separatists demand China to withdraw CPEC project. And. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajpaksa rejects call for resignation amid nationwide protests. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday called on states to urgently ramp up COVID-19 inoculation for children and bolster genome sequencing to track newer variants amid concerns of rising cases in recent days. In a review meeting to assess the health situation across the nation with chief ministers of states, he warned that the COVID-19 crisis has not yet been overcome. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday held a review meeting with the chief ministers and senior officials of states in wake of the recent surge of coronavirus cases in the country. PM Modi in his virtual interaction warned that the COVID-19 crisis has not yet been overcome. He stressed the importance of prioritizing administration of vaccines to every eligible child at the earliest and the need to ensure COVID-appropriate behavior in public places. एलिजिबल बच्चों का जल्द से जल्द टीकाकरण यह हमारी प्राथमिकता है इसके लिए पहले की तरह स्कूलों में विशेष अभियान भी चलाने की जरूरत होगी टीचर्स और माता पिता इसे लेकर जागरूक रहें PM Modi statements committee after the drugs controller general of India DCGI granted an emergency use authorization of Bharat Biotech's co-vaccine for the age group of 6 to 12 years. COVID-19 vaccination for the age group 12 to 14 years was started on March 16 this year. Meanwhile, India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage exceeded 1.88 billion as per provisional reports on Wednesday morning. The South Asian nation added 2,927 new cases on Wednesday, the highest one-day jump since March 13 pushing the total official tally past 43 million. India's active caseload currently stands at 16,279. Moving on, at least 11 people were electrocuted to death and 15 others injured after a life wire fell on their chariot during a temple festival in India's southern Tamil Nadu state on Tuesday. The diseased devotees were pulling the temple chariot in a procession in Tanjavur town when it came in contact with overhead high-voltage power line. The injured were immediately rushed to hospitals and are undergoing treatment. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed his condolences to the families of the victims and announced on Twitter a compensation of nearly 2,609 US dollars for next to the kin of the deceased and 652 dollars for the injured. This is a high tension wire. High tension wire is a lot of water. It is a lot of balance. It is a lot of high tension wire. It is a lot of high tension wire. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Wednesday said India at 75 years of its independence is at a juncture where it should put behind the idea that it needs to get approval from other quarters and that others define India. His remarks came in the backdrop of India's much-debated stand on the Russia-Ukraine conflict. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar on Wednesday said India at 75 years of its independence is at a juncture where it should put behind the idea that it needs to get approval from other quarters and that others define India. The remarks came during the Raisina Dialogue a geopolitical gathering in New Delhi amid India's much-debated stand on the Russia-Ukraine conflict. 
While India has condemned the violence and urged for a ceasefire, it has continued its historical ties with Russia. Jayashankar said the best way to deal with the conflict in Ukraine would be to focus on stopping the fighting and getting the talking to move forward. I, I, I think it's better to engage the world on the basis of who we are rather than try and please the world as a pay limitation of what they are. Uh, this idea that others define us, that you know somewhere that we need to get approval uh, of uh, other quarters, I think that's an era we need to put behind us. The seventh edition of Rice in a Dialogue in New Delhi that concluded on Wednesday witnessed around 100 sessions with over 210 speakers from 90 countries over a span of three days. In news from Pakistan, separatist group Baloch Liberation Army has warned Beijing to withdraw China-Pakistan economic corridor projects from Balochistan as it claimed responsibility for the bombing in Pakistan's Karachi city on Tuesday. Four people, including three Chinese nationals, were killed in the blast that was carried out by first female suicide bomber of Baloch Liberation Army. Separatist group BLA, the Baloch Liberation Army, has warned Beijing to withdraw China-Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC project while claiming responsibility for a deadly explosion in Pakistan's Karachi on Tuesday that killed at least four people, including three Chinese teachers. The three were among passengers on a minibus travelling near the Karachi University's Confucius Institute when a women's suicide bomber detonated the bomb, killing them and a fourth person, a Pakistani. In an unverified video doing rounds on social media, a BLA member stated that unless China and Pakistan withdraw from Balochistan, attacks will continue. China, you came here without our consent, supported our enemies, helped Pakistani military in wiping our villages. But now it's our turn. Baloch Liberation Army guarantees you that CPEC will fail miserably on Baloch land. Pakistan's newly elected Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif condemned what he called a cowardly act of terrorism. The blast was the first major attack against Chinese nationals in Pakistan since last year when a suicide bomber blew up a passenger bus in northern Pakistan that killed 13 people, including nine Chinese. Ethnic Baloch guerrillas have been fighting the government for decades, demanding a separate state and saying the Pakistan government along with China has been unfairly exploiting Balochistan's rich gas and mineral resources. Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Wednesday took oath as Pakistan's foreign minister in the government led by Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif. This is the first time 33-year-old Bilawal will be serving as the member of the federal cabinet. Moving on, locals in Gilgit Baltistan have lamented the poor infrastructure in the region and claimed that they are suffering badly due to the poor roads. They blame the Pakistan government has left all sections of the society at their own mercy over the years, with no development in sight. Locals in remote areas of Gilgit, Baltistan have blamed negligence by Pakistan to develop road infrastructure in the illegally occupied region which continues to affect their lives. They claimed that even tourists explore the areas that come under the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC projects because roads are developed there but other destinations with great tourism potential remain unexplored due to dilapidated condition of roads and connectivity issues. हमारे पास इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सही नहीं है हमारे पास पक्की रोडें नहीं है तो लोग लोग खस्ताहार रोडों से गुजरते हुए आना पसंद नहीं करते हैं ये जो हुंजा नगर ये जो इलाका है ये सीपेक का इलाका है इस इलाके में इर्द गिर्द जितने भी इलाके आते हैं उनका लोग उनको देखते हैं Locals say Pakistan's illegal occupation has pushed Gilgit Baltistan into the most neglected, backward and impoverished region in South Asia. Pakistan's indifference to the region is also reflected in the fact that it is largely treated as a colony and does not have a place in any government framework. In news from Sri Lanka, amid the ongoing political upheaval in Sri Lanka triggered by the ongoing economic crisis, 
Prime Minister Mahinda Rajpaksa has reiterated he will not resign. His remarks came as the main opposition party began a six-day protest march on Tuesday, blaming the Rajpaksa government of mismanaging the economy. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahinda Rajpaksa has rejected calls for his resignation amid nationwide protests over an ongoing economic crisis, but said he will step down if he loses the majority in the parliament. Speaking during a meeting with members of provincial councils at his residence on Tuesday, Rajpaksa said that his government came to power with a popular mandate. If a certain section of people want them to go, they can do it through an election. This came as Sri Lanka's main opposition party, led by Sajid Prem Dasa, began a six-day protest march on Tuesday, which is expected to end in capital Colombo on Labor Day with a major rally to demand resignation of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa and his cabinet. The country announced a suspension on some of its foreign debt repayments earlier this month and said it would divert its mega reserves to fund essential imports such as fuel, cooking gas and medicine. Soaring inflation and shortages of essentials have created a civil unrest across the nation. Meanwhile, the president's office in a statement informed the World Bank has agreed to provide Sri Lanka with $600 million in financial assistance to help meet payment requirements for essential imports. The Sri Lankan government has also appealed to multiple countries and multilateral organizations for bridge financing before it meets IMF conditions for a loan program. Moving on to news from Nepal, a helicopter has been deployed to control the raging forest fire at a section of the conservation area lying on the outskirts of Nepal's capital Kathmandu. As the Himalayan nation continues to witness a rise in forest fire incidents with the onset of the dry season. A forest fire broke out at Shivapuri National Park and has been raging high since Tuesday afternoon, police confirmed. The personnel of the Nepal Army Armed Police Force and Nepal Police along with the locals are at work to control the fire. The cause of the fire is yet to be ascertained. Locals along the line of control in Keren sector of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory have converted their homes into homestays to promote border tourism. These rural homestays offer a piece of eternal culture, cuisine, traditions and warm hospitality to travellers. Along the line of control in Keren sector of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory, locals have converted their homes into homestays to promote tourism. Located on the banks of Kishan Ganga River, Keren village in Kupwara district enjoys a majestic view. The homestay owners are primarily engaged in agricultural activities, making it a key source of their income. This initiative is providing a valuable opportunity for them to generate more income with minimum additional investment. Operating homestays nestled inside the beautiful jungles of Keren village has proved to be a busy job for locals. लोगों को बहुत फायदा है इसका कम से कम मतलब है जो टूरिस्ट यहां पर आते हैं वो फिर जब वापस जाते हैं तो यहां जो टूरिस्ट आए थे मुंबई से वो वापस गए उन्होंने इसको मीडिया के जरिए और मतलब इसको उछाला तो वो अप हो गया हमारी बात हमारे यहां की यानी केरन की ये ब्यूटी जो है इसके बारे में बहुत लोगों ने सुना तो अब लोग आना शुरू हो गए हैं The Indian Army is helping the locals in bringing in tourists so that they can earn and profit from border tourism The locals appreciated the support of the Indian Army and the local administration as the footfall of the tourists have increased. हम क्या नाम देते Indian Army के बहुत शुक्रगुजार हैं जिन्होंने यहां एक कदम उठाया है। आप आप देख सकते हैं वहां पे उनके होटल हैं रेस्टोरेंट हैं वहां हद से ज्यादा रश होता है। हमने भी यहां उनके लिए इंतजाम रखे हैं हमने अपने मकान रखे हम हेड सिटे उनको इतने आप अपने घर में करवाएंगे जितना हम तक हो सकेगा हम उनकी खिदमत करेंगे। Jammu and Kashmir government earlier this year partnered with leading global chain of hotels and vacation homes Oyo to open homestays across 75 villages to promote entrepreneurship and create self-employment opportunities. Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline. and follow us on twitter at asia newsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time tomorrow good night
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.